Hey, Mike, it's, it's David Hood with TigerNet. I hope you're doing all right. Have you guys been able to dive in a little bit on, on Virginia? And what did you see out of those guys in that, that win over Duke on Saturday where Miles Brennan, the quarterback, you know, really showed up when it mattered? Yeah, uh, we've got to take some time already to look into that uh, win over Duke. Um, that dude, he showed some heart, you know. Everything wasn't really going to smooth all game, but whenever, like you said, whenever it mattered, he came through. And so, uh, you know, we've noticed that, and, you know, that's something we got to, you know, get ready to compete with this week. But um, just as a team, you know, they do a good job uh, motioning, you know, a whole bunch of movement pre-snap, and they're doing their whole little thing. You know, a lot of the same things they did last year when we played in the ACC Championship. So, um, yeah, yeah, you know, we've, we definitely recognize that and, you know, get ready to get prepared for that. Obviously, it's a different guy at, at quarterback. Bryce Perkins no longer there. But is it pretty much the same offense that you guys saw in the uh, ACC championship game? You know, pretty much some of, the, some of the same stuff that they run? Or or has it changed with Miles back there? Uh, I'll say, I mean, it's kind of hard just to tell really from one game, you know, because we had a lot more film on uh, quarterback from last year. But it is very similar. I can't say that. Uh, you know, they, they use uh, the quarterback five. I forgot his name. But, uh, you know, they ran the ball out with him, too. And, you know, they used quarterback last year also do certain – some of the certain things. Um, yeah, very very similar games, though. But, you know, it's kind of hard to tell just after one if it's, you know, the same exact stuff. But, you know, definitely, definitely some traces of it. Mike, this is uh, Pete Iacobelli from the Associated Press. What were these couple of days off like for you guys? It probably wasn't a normal time. Did you really get to do anything at all, or did you just kind of hang around just to stay safe from uh, any contact with the virus? Yeah, uh, I stayed in Clemson for my weekend and throughout my week. Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of just what we got to do, you know. I'm I'm still actually, you know, kind of, you know, it's kind of like the beginning of the season to me. You know what I'm saying? I've only played, started two starts. So I was watching film, you know, throughout the week. And I came and watched some yesterday, Sunday afternoon. And I know a lot of other guys have too. So, you know, we still very, you know, on edge about playing. We still really excited about playing. And so, um, you know, a lot of guys are here just together. You know, try to keep our own little bubble, our Clemson bubble. Try to stay healthy, try to stay safe. Mike, uh, some teams and programs uh, coaches were talking about how maybe a lack of conditioning or they did not feel like they had the same kind of conditioning this season as in others. How did you feel about that in the preseason? Do you feel like you guys did exactly what you wanted to do to, you know, stay strong, stay healthy, you know, and, and be ready for to play football? Uh, I would say overall, yes. Uh, I feel like us as a team, we did, you know, we – we always make it pretty important to handle our business in the weight room, especially with Coach uh, Batson. But I know it was a little bit challenging at first when everybody was quarantined. You know, some guys didn't have, you know, the ability to get to certain equipment. You know, most everybody really had their cleats. So running, you know, you can find somewhere to run. But um, just when it comes to, like, you know, keeping your body up to a certain, certain standard to go play, uh, that was tough. So I know, I mean, you know, guys fall off when you don't have certain tools. But other than that, you know, when we got back, you know, we kind of hit it full speed, hit the ground running. And I would assume everybody else did the same, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say so, man. You know, we got a, a group that really grinds and, you know, our coaches really push us to the max. And this whole time, you know, we've kind of been, you know, just excited for the opportunity. I feel like since, since as soon as quarantine was over, as soon as we got back, you know, we were like, Yo, let's, you know, let's run with it. Let's be the best we can be every day. And so, um, you know, with our group, I, I don't, I don't really think we were under condition. Hey, Mike, this is uh, David Hale with ESPN. Um, I, you know, I, I know you guys are used to having the tag of being the favorites in the league and, uh, the expectations for Clemson are always high. You know, the last few years, it's sort of been you and then a long list of uh, kind of teams that were probably not in the same league. I, I don't know how much you got to watch games over the 
weekend. But when you see Miami, when you see Virginia, Virginia Tech, uh, Pittsburgh having the kinds of years that they're having so far, um, do you kind of feel like you guys are, um, you know, awaiting a bigger challenge maybe this year than, than you have been in, in years past? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say we're awaiting a bigger challenge. Uh, our mindset every week is, you know, we got to go out and play our best. You know, we try to play Clemson every week, regardless who, who it is we're playing against. But definitely just watching, you know, I would say it is getting very competitive around the ACC. And, um, you know, I feel like, especially like last year, a lot of people were saying, you know, it was a weaker conference. But, you know, as you can see now, and as anybody who tunes in, you know, it is competitive every week with all all different teams. And we got a lot of teams playing some great football right now. And so, uh, yeah, we, you know, we got to bring it week in, week out. Same thing with all the other teams. You know, it's you know, the best going to win. People who prepare the best. And so it really just comes down to that. But, yeah, it, the league is, is looking tough. When, when you see a, a Mississippi State go in and beat LSU in, in their Death Valley and you see Kansas State knock off Oklahoma, Georgia struggles for a half, do you guys need that reminder, you, you know, that, that anybody can win on a, on a given Saturday? Is that good or, or, or no, you know, the culture is so good at Clemson that, that you really don't need it? I wouldn't say we need it. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely eye-opening, but – you know, like I said earlier, you know, we try to play our best, you know, every week. And, you know, whether it's the Citadel or, you know, Virginia or Miami, you know, our our mindset is that, you know, we always want to play our best football. And, um, you know, we don't overlook any opponents. And, you know, we prepare for each other. If, uh, we prepare for each opponent the same. So I don't necessarily think it was a need to see that, but you know, it definitely was, you know, a great little reminder. Uh, having uh, seen LSU up close and personal not that long ago, did you kind of empathize with the situation where they've got, I think they only had three guys from that uh, that started in the championship game against you guys that were uh, starting in this one as well. I mean, you guys had to replace a lot of talent, but not to that level. Do you, does it kind of underscore how hard it is to go from being at the top and maintain where that is? Yeah, that's definitely um... – you know, assigned to, to that right there. You know, it's hard to win and it's hard to keep winning. And, um, you know, I, I do feel for them guys, you know, because, you know, we won one in my freshman year and then we lost, you know, lost the national championship. And so now, you know, we kind of, you know, just like waiting to see, you know, how is this going to be going to turn out, you know, taking it week by week. But, you know, knowing how it feels to lose, you know what I'm saying, especially after winning, that's tough. That that is tough. You know what I'm saying, and especially like an opener like this, you know, you know, it's it's just a weird feeling. You know, some guys just they went 15 and 0 last year. Like some, there's some freshmen on that team that ain't lost a game. So uh, I mean, it's an interesting thing. That's kind of like one of the little things I like about college football. You know, every year you got to restart and go do it again. But um, yeah, that definitely is a testament to you know how hard it is to keep winning. Any other questions for Mike? Hey, Mike, this is Grace Rayner with The Athletic. I'm just curious, is, do, do you and your teammates pick up on the fact that basically every Sunday Trevor Lawrence is trending on Twitter as NFL fan bases are all, <laughs> like, fighting over him? We definitely notice. Uh, you know, I always see it somebody. Somebody's talking about tanking or, you know, we're so bad. We need Trevor. Yeah, we definitely see it. Um, but we really don't try to focus on it. You know, as long as we got them here right now, we are good. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely on notice. I'll be thinking about that too. I'll be like, yo, I'm here to go play. Uh, mm -hmm. See a lot of things, hear a lot of rumors. <laughs> try not to pay attention to it though. Do you guys tease him at all about it? Uh, not as much tease him. Now we talk about ourselves, we laugh, we be like, boy, hope we don't go to this team because That'd be rough, but uh, yeah, nah, it's just more like little jokes within us, you know. Hey, 
Hey, Mike, Josh from the Post and Courier. How, how does Trevor take that when, when you guys do something like that? Um, you know, he's a very headstrong guy. And so, you know, I haven't necessarily asked him about it, but if I were to think how he would respond, you know, because I know it's definitely got to be there. It's all over. Um, I feel like he's just a dude that just, you know, takes it one step at a time, you know, doesn't look too far ahead, and just handles his business that's in front of him, you know. Um, that's kind of who he's been since I've known him, you know, since he's been here, since this whole little quarantine thing and, you know, players opting out thing. He's just been, you know, handling his and just worried about what's right there in front of him right now instead of six months down the road. Did you grow up a Titans fan or who's your, uh, who's your NFL team? <laughs> Okay, so right now I'm kind of in the mix. The Titans are doing back good again, so you know I'm back. I'm back with them a little bit. But uh, yeah, I grew up a Titans fan from like middle school, early elementary school. They had Chris Johnson, they had Linda White. So I remember I had like my little Smash and Dash T-shirt. I wore it to school. They were, they were good. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't know. I don't know who really my team is. I really just you know, try to support my teammates from last year and guys I played with. Um, but I need to go ahead and find me one. I'll probably just wait on it. <laughs> wait on it till I hopefully I make it to the next level and then that'll be my team. You see who lands Trevor next year and then that's your that can be your team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoever gets Trevor. That's that's me. I'm betting on them. Mike, I guess lastly, this is Grace from The Athletic again. Just you said that you spent your bye week watching film. Is there anything about your own game that you picked up on that you want to either change or look into or improve? Um, I would say just pre-snap awareness. And you can't really watch. I mean, it's kind of like hard to see it on film, like, you know, go through your thoughts. But, you know, like I like will watch my play and I just think about, like, what was I thinking here? No, and just working on that and just trying to continue to make strides in the mental game before the snap, you know, to put myself in a better position, you know, post-snap. Um, I would say that's the main thing, just, just getting ahead in the film room, staying, staying ready there.